because it's so broad that it turns every single student and every single faculty member on campus, at least arguably, into harassers. Hi, I'm Matt Welch for Reason TV with the president of the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, Greg Lukianoff. Last week, uh, there was some news in your part of the world, which you called a shocking affront to the United States Constitution. What happened? After years of universities relying on harassment codes um, as, as speech codes, since the 1980s they've relied on harassment codes as speech codes, we thought we were making real progress through a series of, of court decisions and through, a, uh, through FIRE's good work to get the definition of harassment into a sane, uh, understandable, narrow definition so people don't get punished for teaching a class that has racy content or for, as you know, as I talk about in the book, publicly reading a book or for that matter, implying that it might be something negative to say about a hockey coach, which are all real cases. So we really felt like we were making progress and it's all entirely down the drain uh, thanks to a letter that was sent to the University of Montana by the Department of Education and the Department of Justice. Um, whereas there's, there's a very narrow uh, uh, definition of harassment, they've redefined harassment to mean simply any unwelcome uh, speech of a sexual nature and also they eliminated the, the objectively offensive prong of it. So basically any unwelcome speech of a sexual nature, even if it's unreasonable for you to have objected to it. So if I say, hey, Greg, you're looking kind of hot today. Yeah. Is that seriously under the definition of harassment? Absolutely. And, and, and that's part of the problem is it's so broad that it turns every single student and every single faculty member on campus, at least arguably, into harassers. What does it matter that the federal government sent these letters and what, what what's the enforcement mechanism? And what does it pertain to? Well, the, the interesting thing about the University of Montana case was it was actually about assault, um, but it shows the way that uh, disc discrimination law has just sort of um, cr crept up. Assault is considered to be a form of harassment. The Department of Education has power over federal funding and is tasked to prevent harassment on campus. Um, so in the course of dealing with assault, they decided to, while they were at it, to redefine harassment as essentially really anything sexually related whatsoever. So to get this straight here, any federal education funding yep. is now going to go only to those campuses that embrace this definition of assault? Yeah, absolutely. And there's only about four colleges that we know of that don't accept any federal funding whatsoever. Because you have to remember, this includes Stafford loans, this includes any funding whatsoever. So what's the upshot of this? What's the possibility of fighting it in any way? Well, the only good news is here is that I think that the government might have overplayed its hand here. Um, I think this is finally, I hope this is finally, uh, the, 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 the last straw that's going to cause universities themselves to start pushing back against this ridiculous overregulation. Well, this is all very chilling and disturbing. Thank you very much, Greg, and uh, keep up the good fight with it. For Reason TV, I am Matt Welch.